Hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Today I would like to talk about a book that I got years and years ago before I even had a Nintendo and that is the official Nintendo Player's Guide book. Now a lot of my memories of how to play some of these games come from this book so let's take a look. Okay so here we go. Here is the official Nintendo Player's Guide book and I've got my buddy Lego Mario here to help me read it so Actually, get out of the way. Go, go over there. Who made this book? I, I never really paid that much attention to who actually made it. Um, I'm sure Nintendo probably created it themselves. Look, it's got Nintendo's address on here. Well, pff, their P.O. box anyway. All right, I got to be really careful with this because I don't want to damage it or anything. So I'm going to hold it kind of delicately. I remember this. I, I have a poster that's just like this. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit bigger, of course. You're probably already familiar with many of the great video games produced by Nintendo and other manufacturers who make game packs, well, they didn't want to call them cartridges anymore after the Atari thing, that can be played on your Nintendo Entertainment System. But the official Nintendo Player's Guide is designed to help make you a video game expert. So this is going to make me a video game expert. Oh, you remember how they used to have the different uh, logos on the side of the cartridges? They don't. They, they kind of stopped doing that after a while. Arcade series, programmable series, adventure series, action series. All right, so here you go. The first thing that you're going to see is this Legend of Zelda player guide. I'll be perfectly honest, I've never really played through the Legend of Zelda. I played it a little bit here and there. I've never played it all the way through. Now this is kind of funny. Pole's voice. If you know anything about the Famicom, the Famicom actually had a, uh, a microphone built into the controller so that you could talk to the console and uh, apparently scare off these characters. That's why they're called po Pole's Voice. Dark Nut. <laughs> really? Dark Nut? Oh, here you go. Here's the whole map. I guess this is the overworld, the entire overworld map. Look at that. If you played all the way through Zelda, you may have made a map yourself just like this. Oh, here's a couple of uh, mazes here. Kind of shows you how to get through each one of these mazes. It's kind of nice to have, I, honestly. Is it cheating to, to read a magazine like this or a book like this and beat a game? Or should you play it yourself by using, you know, graph paper and map out an entire uh, game like that yourself? Okay, so here's Punch Out. I've never beaten Tyson. I, I've never even come close. I think I've gotten to um, maybe Bald Bull and maybe uh, maybe I beat him, but I'm not sure if I've been able to beat some of these characters. Glass Joe, probably the easiest character to beat in the world. If Mac knocks Joe down in less than one minute without any mistakes, he'll get up on the first count. This is your KO chance. When Joe gets up, quickly throw an uppercut. He probably won't be able to get up a second time. Blocking the piston punch. Sway away from uppercut, punch to the face. Well, that's kind of what you do for all these uh, characters. Do they show you how to beat Tyson in here? Oh, see, here you go. This is about as far as I got. Bald bull. That may be that may be why I only got this far because because of this book. So I guess this is saying kind of like what it does, uh, like we've all figured out by now. Well, most of us, I still haven't, but that if you can survive the first what minute and a half, then then you're good. So it's hard to beat him in the beginning. So just stay alive basically, and then you can take him out normally later. Commando. Oh yeah, Commando. This is such a beautiful book. Secret points. I didn't, did you know that there was like secret uh, passageways inside Commando? If you bomb certain areas, the, the ladders will appear. This is all hand drawn, of course. Here we go, Super Mario Brothers. Destroy Super Mario on purpose. One defensive tactic is to let Super Mario die. He then turns into semi-transparent Mario and is invincible for a few seconds. Well, yeah, we've all done that, right? <laughs> Maybe not intentionally. Fireworks can be set off when you jump onto the pole at the end of each level. If you hit one, three, or six on your counter, then you'll get one, three, or six fireworks. And you get 500 points for, per firework. Is this where you can get the, yeah, this is the, it actually tells you how to do that one-up trick where you can get multiple um, one-ups. I've never been able to do that, though. You have to kind of hit him as he's coming down the staircase, this Koopa, and then you just keep bouncing up and down on him over and over, and you get one-ups. Never been able to do that. World 1, World 2, Area 3, all the different uh, maps. I think that's just basically World, uh, world 4. Oh, yeah, all the way to World 4. So yeah, half of the game is here in uh, in this book. Ghosts and Goblins. Never been a fan of Ghosts and Goblins because it's such a hard game. I don't think I've ever even beaten the first level, but it's fun looking at these pictures. 
how nice they are. Top Gun. I'm sure the angry video game nerd has plenty to say about it. Combat level three. Never really played never really played Top Gun that much. I did play Double Dribble a lot though. I like this game. I really like these cinematics. They're just amazing, aren't they? Look at that. It's so cool. That would happen when you would uh, get a really good dunk in the game or something. Adventure of Link. You know, I do remember renting a lot of these games, probably because I saw them in this uh, in this book. I don't think I've ever would have rented Adventure of Link, but I hear it's a really tough game. This game is filled with mysteries. Solving these mysteries one by one is the real joy of playing this game. Hmm. Okay, Metroid, another tough game. I love these uh, screenshots here that they got. How do you think they got these screenshots back in the day? Did they just take a camera right up against the screen and just take a picture of it? Oh, look at this. The entire map, I'm assuming, of the game. Look at this. This is crazy. I totally get lost. Totally get lost in this. Metroid is a tough game. Playing tips. If you get a round ball, then you can go through the narrow passageway easily. That's like the first thing you want to do. Okay, Rad Racer. The thing I remember about Rad Racer is, well, this. This little... Uh, how to go around a curve trick. I do that in uh, Mario Kart now. But the uh, thing I remember mostly about Rad Racer is that it had that uh, the 3D capability. If you had some uh, red, blue 3D glasses, you could uh, play it in 3D. Of course, it you know was not very good 3D. Here you go. Here's some of the tracks. Very cool. Ring King. I think I may have rented this too at some point. Wasn't very good. I kept waiting for this P to show up, but it never did. I don't think it ever did. Gradius, one of the classic shooters on the NES. I believe this also has the um, Konami code in it. Right down here, there is a secret full option command, which enables you to start the game equipped with missiles, two options, and some force field barriers. To activate the full option command, press start to pause, then press the controller up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and then release to pa the pause. So you do that, I guess, during the game? Kid Icarus. Look at that. Speck nose. Magoo. Gana, Gana Wamid. The Reaper and the Reapettes. This is a strange game to me. I played it a few weeks ago. It's so weird because you start at the bottom and you go upwards instead of going down. Oh, here you go. Now you're going left to right. Well, that makes more sense. I would be more comfortable with that. Or going just kind of all over the place. How to defeat enemy characters over there. The Reaper is pacing, aim and shoot him with arrows when his back is turned. Yeah, it's shooting a guy in the back. That's probably the best way to go. Pro Wrestling. Oh, this was my game right here. Yes, this was my game. I studied this one a lot because I loved the, uh, the Amazon, <laughs> especially because of this uh, piranha bite that he would do. I love that piranha bite. He'd just bite the guy in the head. <laughs> or the, uh, the outlaw choke. He like he like choke the guy, and then he like shake his head like, oh, "What did I do? I didn't do anything." Some of these other characters are really good too, but I, I always like the Amazon the best. Don't get thrown out of the ring. I would always try to throw these guys out of the ring, and then uh, you know go out. I'd go outside the ring too, and then I'd beat them up for a little bit and try to sneak back in the ring before they could. That was always fun. Castlevania, another great game for the NES. Never gotten too far in it. A couple of levels maybe. And something always holds me up. An effective way to defeat Queen Medusa is to shoot her continuously. Well, isn't that like the effective way to defeat any character? This is like the entire game, looks like. Holy cow. Stage 7, stage 8, stage 9. Is this the whole game? Excite Bike. Now this was interesting because you could make your own levels. I don't think you could save them, but you could make them and then have uh, your friends play them. Have these different uh, types of jumps that you can just add in anywhere along the track. Arkanoid, the successor to Breakout. Of course, Arkanoid's cool because it has all these different uh, power-ups over here. Russian Attack. I remember seeing this in the arcades a lot. My friend would play it, and then I remember renting it at the uh, renting it from uh, the, the game store. Didn't get very far again. You know, it's just a lot of these games you can't get too far in. Donkey Kong, of course, Donkey Kong, but it's only showing two levels, three levels, showing that level. But this version of Donkey Kong does not have level four in it, the, the Cement Factory. Why? Why not the Cement Factory? Rygar. Kind of funny, I saw the the review, I think it was GameSack that did a review on this. They were talking about how the game is so much different than the arcade version of the game. It was interesting how Nintendo would change, well not Nintendo specifically I guess, but the developer would change 
an arcade game to to really expand it on the NES. And they've really changed it into more of a like an RPG here for the NES. Same thing with like uh, like Bi Bionic Commando. They turned that into kind of a um, an RPG as well. Your Spy Hunter. Oh, this was a game I used to play a lot in the arcades. Goonies 2. Why is there a Goonies 2? They, they never came out with a movie called Goonies 2. Why is this game called Goonies 2? I've never understood it. Just call it Goonies! But this game is, is pretty crazy in terms of a RPG. I've never really played it. I should probably give it a shot one of these days. Look at this! What the heck is this? Backstage, front stage. The Fratelli hideout is like a maze. Holy cow. Nah, you know, you'd never get very far in that game without something like this book. You have to buy this book. That, that's like their, their whole scam is that they make you buy the book. Ikari Warriors, Little Athena, Radio, Gold, Watch, Paperweight, and a Golden Heart that looks like it's silver. ABBA, where's the code? Where's the code? Is the code in here? ABBA. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Press ABBA on the controller and this enables you to continue your game. Why not just hit start to continue? Why make you do a code like that every time? Then you got the stage select that looks insane, trying to, uh, choose your uh, your stage I, I don't I don't think it's worth the effort honestly look at that it goes on forever and ever and oh here we go kung fu powerful kung fu action game again this was an arcade game as well that they brought home playing tips the mansion has five stories secret points you can use this technique on any floor after you start go on defeating enemies you until you reach the twelfth one if you beat him with a jump kick you'll receive five thousand points Hmm. All right, then we get into, I guess these are games that are coming soon when this uh, book was released. Well, Rygar, we've already talked about Rygar, Adventures of Link, Zelda, Metroid, Kid Icarus, Deadly Towers. Not a fan. I played that a couple times. It was not uh, not really my favorite. Goonies 2, Double Dribble, Baseball. I like the baseball game that they had for the NES. And the tennis game, too. Punch-Out, Golf, Rad Racer. There's tennis right there. Ten-Yard Fight, ugh. I think I played it and I did not like it. Volleyball, never played it. Slalom, soccer, don't think I played it. Pro wrestling, one of my favorites. Winter games, muscle, family fun fitness, karate champ, tag team wrestling, stadium events. Stadium events. Who knew that that would become one of the most valuable games ever? And of course, that is the, uh, I think that's the one that's valuable too, right there. I think that's actually the one that's super valuable too. Because Nintendo later released it with the power pad. I think they purchased the game and just released it themselves. Ring King, Side Pocket. I liked Side Pocket. I played that a lot because I was big into pool back then. Lunar Pool. That's a fun game. Track and Field, Super Mario, Kung Fu, Pinball, Balloon Fight, Ice Climber, Urban Champion, Clue Clue Land, Star Voyager, 3D World Runner, Tiger Heli, Super Pitfall. Don't ever play that game. Ever. <laughs> it's bad. It's so bad. Chubby Cherub. I don't remember that game. Ninja Kid, Spelunker, Raid on Bungling Bay. Commando, Ghosts and Goblins, Section Z, Trojan, 1942, Mega Man, Kid Nicky, Breakthrough. That was fun. I played Breakthrough a lot. Squoon, looks weird. Zanuck, Karnov. You know, I don't think I've ever played Karnov. You know, I know about him. I know about him in uh, being uh, in so many of the Data East games, but I didn't. I don't think I've ever actually played his game before. Gradius, Russian Attack, Castlevania, Jaws, Top Gun, Stinger. It's weird. Some of these games I've kind of forgotten about. Karate Kid, Ikari Warriors, Athena, Sky Kid, Spy Hunter, Alpha Mission. Is this like every game that Nintendo had out at the time? Legend of Cage, Arkanoid, Renegade, Hogan's Alley. Now we get into the shooter games. Solomon's Key, Mighty Bomb Jack. There you go. Uh, my friend Sean likes Mighty Bomb Jack. Duck Hunt, Gumshoe, Wild Gunman. That's like a baby's toy. Gotcha. Excite Bike, Mock Rider. Mock Rider, yeah. Motorcycle game. I wonder if that's kind of where uh, or like Road Rash came from. It's kind of motorcycle games. Wrecking Crew, Load Runner. Then this is kind of where I lived most of the time is in the arcade stuff. Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong Jr., Popeye. Popeye is a fun game. It's kind of underrated, I think. But uh, that was kind of Nintendo's original game that they wanted to come out with after Radar Scope pretty much failed. They, they wanted to come out with Popeye, but they couldn't secure the license. So instead they came out with Donkey Kong. And then... Donkey Kong Jr., then Mario Brothers, then apparently, I guess King Features must have, must have realized that uh, that Nintendo was serious and that they were going to um, you know, do a good job, so they said, hey, we'll go ahead and do it, and uh, they licensed it over to Nintendo. Donkey Kong 3, Burger Time, Elevator Action, Gyromite Stack Up, Bad Memories of the Nintendo Nerds uh, Rob uh, video, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, really? Donkey Kong Jr. Math? 
We had to come out with an educational game to appease the uh, parents back then. Then here's some of the coming attractions. RC Program, Wizards and Warriors, TNC Surf Designs, Major League Baseball, Star Force, Ice Hockey, Dragon Warrior, which would become huge, the Dragon Warrior games, Dragon Power, of course, Contra. How could, oh, why is Contra not in this, uh, in this book? Victory Road, which is Ikari Warriors 2, this is terrible. Return of Donkey Kong, and here's a game Here's a game that never came out. Return of Donkey Kong. This is your chance to get hold of the barrel-throwing, mischief-making rascal Donkey Kong and take control. Nintendo's best-known character is back, and he's up to more tricks and trouble than you can imagine. Well, I'm going to have to imagine it because that game never came out. That's sad. I wanted Return of Donkey Kong. Well, I guess maybe eventually it turned into Donkey Kong Country on the uh, Super Nintendo, maybe? Oh, wow. Then you got the whole uh, alphabetical order. And uh, indexed by manufacturers, indexed by game series. Now you're playing with power. Now you're playing with power. So Mario, what did you think of your official Nintendo Player's Guide? So did you have the official Nintendo Player's Guide book back in the day? Or some other guide book that would be interesting? If you did, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, please click the like, share, subscribe buttons. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.